Okay. Um, time 1330. Made it to the emergency department from clinic. Clinic labs pending, upper respiratory infection times three days, sickle cell disease diagnosed at birth. Pain in both legs started 12 hours ago. Now rated 7 out of 10, giving 500 milligrams of adacinamorphine um, over the counter two hours ago. Allergic to penicillin. Vital signs, temperature 97, I mean 99. Um, pulse 110, respiration 32, BP 108 over 70. Pulse at 7 or 90% at room air. Um, developmental neurologic. Appropriate for age, weight, 50 pounds, 22.7 kilograms. Uh, immune, immune, immunizations up to date. Cardio respiratory, heart rate regular, coarse crackles noted in lungs, base bilaterally, no cough. Gastrointestinal emitted. Abdomen soft, no complaints of nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. Regular diet for age. Want to read the labs too? Um, sure. Go go right ahead. Thank you. Um, the bun is twelve milligrams per deciliter. Mm -hmm. Creatinine is one point zero. Uh, hematocrit is thirty percent. Hemoglobin is ten point four. WBC six point seven times ten cells. Platelet is at thirty five. Um, 350,000, um, potassium is 4.5, sodium is 138. Okay, fantastic. Okay, all right. Thank you, Jennifer. Antonia, welcome back. Um, are you hearing and seeing us well? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I just, internet was, need to be restarted. Okay, yes, we, we just started the case study. And so at the end, I'll go back to your question, your other question, but I don't okay. know the answer to the fenestrated one. That's so okay. I'm going to have to look that up because I, I really don't know that off, off uh, the top of my head. I'm going to have to get some evidence, evidence based. Yes. Um, okay. So yes, we started looking at this case, right? And so it's a six-year-old female with a history of sickle cell disease. And I want to have you all kind of break this down. What do you think is going on with this patient? What are your considerations? What just, you know, everything that comes to mind as you're reading these, you know, nurses notes, the, or I should say the history and physical. Anybody want to chime in on what they see, what, what they're thinking? Well, she already has sickle cells. So we know that the, because the cells are, the cells are sickle because they're not getting enough oxygen. And so on top of the fact that she has an upper respiratory infection, and then you look at um, some of the things that are going on with her are because of her infection alone. Even if she didn't have sickle cell, some of these things would be going on because of the infection. So um, I, I have a question before we even start. You know, normally with sickle cell, it's like really, 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 really painful. Yes. So that medicine wouldn't do anything for the patient. Is it because she's a child and she's so young? Uh, that's a great question. And you can give children, I believe, stronger pain medications, but you're absolutely right. Um, it is extremely painful. I don't really know if that um, acetaminophen is going to be good enough for this patient and her pain. Uh, so that's a great question. Um, and I just want to... No, it's not. <laughs> I've yes. seen people come in with a crisis and like they got some of the strongest IV stuff and they are still screaming, literally screaming. Yes, it is painful, but and I think what Alicia was mentioning is, is it because it's a pediatric patient? And so the concern that Alicia is bringing up is, and that's something that, you know, nurses, we know that there's no room for error when it comes to pediatric patients. We can't have any medication error. We can't give them too much of a particular medication because their bodies are not able to handle a lot of these medications. Their kidneys are still developing, their liver still developing, so that kind of thing. So maybe that's the reason why. I'm not really sure. Um, 
so and there's one more thing that I wanted to address that you mentioned Alicia about the sickle cells so we have red blood cells they're usually disc shape or donut shape and so that's a healthy red blood cell now the patient that has sickle cell disease they have abnormal hemoglobin and so this is why their red blood cells become uh, hard and sticky and they have that C shape or that crescent moon shape or that sickle shape so the, I just wanted to make sure that that part was uh, clear uh, when, when it comes to sickle cell disease. But you're, you're right in everything else that you said, and you're right to question, is this acetamin over the counter going to be enough? Now, it says that she was admitted at 1300, but she got that acetaminophen over the counter. So this is something that it seems like she uh, took at home. Okay, so she took it home. So this leads me to ask the question, and I think this is what Alicia is getting to. Would I expect to see a doctor's order for a stronger pain medication like morphine or Dilaudid? And I would say that that's, that's fair. That's fair. Okay. Um, okay. So, yes. Um, Alicia, did you have anything else to, to add? No, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Good. So good breaking that down. Cause I don't think I saw that it was the over the counter. That was before she got there. All right. Anybody else have any comments on what's going on with the patient? Yes. Um, based on the lab reports, her hematocrit, her hemoglobin, her white blood cells are um, kind of out of whack. So it's saying like she's experiencing anemia and so forth with this, with this infection. Okay, so let me ask you, and that's a great observation, Jennifer. Based on the health history and physical, is this an unexpected or is it an expected finding, these lab values? Um, it's expected with sickle cell. Right, with sickle cell and her upper respiratory infection. So everything is matching up, right? And that's a really good critical question that you asked or that you a point that you made about those those values. And I would expect to see that in a sickle, sickle cell patient. Um, let's see, let's see. So she's allergic to penicillin. Okay, what about her vital signs? How do you all feel about her vital signs? Pulse and respiration. Is yeah, her respiration. Yeah. Her oxygen on room air is a little low for me. Okay, so she's on room air. So that is, you know, making me think, okay, I should expect to see an order maybe for one or two liters of oxygen via nasal cannula, right? Maybe that's something that I could expect to see. Okay, what about uh, the rest of the, the history and physical? The crackles. Mm hmm. So how does that correlate these coarse crackles with the pulse ox on 90 percent on room air? Yeah, fluid in the lungs somewhere. OK, so that's probably why this patient has ineffective airway clearance. Right. So the coarse crackles, they have this upper respiratory infection for three days. OK, so whenever you get these kinds of questions, of course, you're going to read it. You're going to look at the lab values. And I like these because they actually give you the normal range. And I look for, OK, is anything abnormal with this patient? And okay, is that expected based on their medical condition? And so Jennifer said, yes, the he hematocrit hemoglobin, the white blood cells, they're out of normal range, but that's expected based on her condition. Okay. All right. Um, let's now go to the question. I'm going to shrink it down a little bit because I think we did a good analysis of this. So, <laughs> excuse me. So from the list of choices, we're going to drag the condition that the client is most likely experiencing to the box on the right. And then we're going to drag two actions the nurse should take to address that condition. Okay. So I'm going to mm -hmm. give you all a moment to think about it and then tell me what you think. I have not heard of at least two of those. I agree with you. I got nothing. The two in the middle. I know she in a crisis, but yeah. which crisis 
cute. I don't know them two in the middle. Yeah, what's a plastic and what's the a plastic is when the body stops producing enough red blood cells. Like yeah, your I would, I would go with I would go with that. And what about sequestration? Yeah, what's that one? That one is when the spleen stops working and becomes like there's like there's too many um sickle cells because the spleen stops working. So it becomes flooded with sickle cells. Mm. But but the cute one is the acute one is when the, the red blood cells are sticky in the vessels. Like I I would assume that one it was it's that one because she has an infection. So like it's upper respiratory. Like I don't know. I don't know which one, but I, I would go with that one. I don't think you would hear crackles with a with a respiratory infection unless it's pneumonia. Acute chest. Okay. What is that? I don't know. Okay, so acute chest syndrome is a complication of sickle cell, and it can cause chest pain, and I'm going to put this into the chat, uh, cough, fever, low oxygen levels, and abnormal substances in the lung. Okay. Oh, that's it. Okay, uh, but there's also some clinical cues, so I want to give you some more information about it. Uh, with this patient, they're going to have difficulty breathing. They're also, so they're going to have some dipsia. They're also going to uh, have pain in their chest, okay? Pain in their chest. Uh, they can have tachypnea. They can have wheezing. Um, let me see. Um, let me see. Can the pediatric patient have chest pain? Because um, that's what I'm always thinking about when I have, this is my first peds one. They would probably have chest pain, but I don't know if, I guess children, they may not uh, have the pain, but they will present with signs of infections for acute chest syndrome. Okay, so I'm just putting that in the chat so you can see it. And another good way is like how we're kind of talking this through and trying to figure it out because we're not familiar with all of these terms. If you're studying and you're doing these questions, then definitely write it down and, and look these up later because you could possibly see this on NCLEX or med surge test or if you're in transitions. Okay. All right. So based on all of our discussions about acute chest syndrome, aplastic crisis, sequestration crisis, and pain crisis, what do you think <laughs> the client is experiencing excuse me acute chest syndrome yeah that's that's what i said okay so you're saying acute chest syndrome okay and so with that said drag two actions the nurse should take to address that condition to the box on the right uh all right uh, two actions. Begin oxygen therapy because the oxygen is at 90 on room okay. air. Okay. You don't need fluid because they already got crackles. So uh, I'm torn between the morphine because they're probably in a lot of pain or broad spectrum antibiotics. I would definitely do morphine. Yeah. Okay, um, so I'm you're saying morphine. morphine? Yeah. Yes. But I don't know. Um, yeah, I'm kind of torn with the prepare for a stat blood transfusion because they got anemia going on. So I, I would go with the morphine also, but I'm torn with that in the transfusion. Well, I was thinking morphine and maybe... Um, yeah, because even with the blood transfusion, you're going to have sickle cell. Like, sickle cell doesn't go away. That doesn't really fix anything. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay, so Siani, let me see if she's still here. She might, she's going to have to come back. Okay. Okay, let me just get her back in. Okay, so you're saying the two actions to take. Okay, very good. And then 
the next section is everybody I think is in agreement with the, the two actions that you said oxygen and morphine yeah okay and the and this is a bow tie question by the way in, in case you're wondering this is a bow tie kind of yeah. question um, let me just check Siani can you hear me Okay, she might not be able to hear. Okay, so the next section, the next part of it, drag two parameters the nurse should monitor to assess the client's progress to the box on the right. Okay, so what two things should we monitor in this patient? Mm. Mm. Well, we have to monitor the breath sound. We have to monitor something with the uh, breathing because we gave yeah. her morphine. Breath sounds in so, O2 sets. Right. Yeah. We have to do that. Okay, so you're voting for breath sounds and O2 sets? Mm, yeah. But the pain level is important as well as the hemoglobin level. But I don't want to kill the patient, the patient though. That's right, what yeah. True. That's what's abnormal. The hemoglobin level is what's abnormal. So I was thinking that too. But like to watch, to monitor the pain, like, I mean, we know that there's severe pain. Like, I mean, is there more that we can do for them besides give them the morphine? Nope. They're going to be in pain regardless of a sickle cell crisis. So, okay. Well, do we want to waste our answer on, um, on, on um, pain levels? Nope. Or so, well, would you by you giving them morphine? Would you monitor their blood, their vital signs, their blood pressure? You would monitor yeah. their breathing because morphine's mechanism of action is it's going to relax the muscles, and that includes the diaphragm. So they're going to have um, slower respirations. Okay. So does that mean? Um, breath sounds and hemoglobin or are we going with breath sounds and blood pressure? I mean, but yeah, I think O2 set and breath sounds. I, I would, I'm going to, I would stick with it. Like, I don't know if I'm right on that. Like it just breathing is the most important out of all of these right. choices. Right. ABCs. You're right. Okay, so there's some really good discussion here. I'm not going to stop you. I'm just putting this here so we can understand what's going on with the bow tie. Okay, so with the bow tie, what you would expect in the middle of the bow tie, you're going to have the condition that the patient is most likely experiencing. Okay, and so on the left-hand side of this bow tie, what do we do? And so this is also going to be... Uh, the same thing right down here, right? What action do we take? Okay, the action uh, to take. And then on the right-hand side of the bow tie, you have the parameter to monitor, okay? And when we always think, right, uh, in terms of the nursing process, if we do something, we have to then evaluate it. So that's a way that you can kind of think about it, okay? Mm -hmm. So let me just put this in, parameter to monitor. Okay, so that's what the bow tie kind of, oh, I'm so, that is so typed uh, incorrectly. Sorry about the typos. Um, but so this is what the bow tie is. So you all mentioned... <laughs> you all mentioned that the patient is most likely experiencing acute chest syndrome. I don't know if I necessarily agreed with, <laughs> with that because I was kind of torn with the, excuse me for all my coughs. Um, I was kind of torn because this, you know, it was a pediatric patient and they would be having, you know, I thought chest pain. 
right? But let's look at uh, what the rationale tells us about this, okay? So we should actually have choose a pain crisis. A pain crisis is what this patient is going through. And when we think about the pain being, um, you know, was it seven out of 10? We know that sickle cell patients have this crisis. That was something that you all mentioned. Um, and so that is like the most common thing that we see with patients presenting to the emergency room. But let's talk about these other scenarios, okay? But we know that pain crisis is the right thing. Acute chest syndrome. There's going to be respiratory findings and they're going to have chest pain, breath sound changes, or a cough. Okay, so the thing that was missing from acute chest uh, syndrome no was uh, the the pain in the chest. And this patient did not report any pain in the chest. A lot of times when I see it with your adult patient, the questions they will have, the patient is in the hospital in a sickle cell crisis. They push the call bell and they say they have a sudden onset of chest pain. That tells me, those clinical cues tell me that, okay, that is acute chest syndrome. So, um, and it's kind of similar though to the pain crisis though, but they didn't have the chest pain. So that would not be the best choice. Now, the aplastic anemia, that is severe anemia. So a severe anemia, when I look at the, the, the blood work, yeah, they're a little anemic, but it's not severe, okay? So this is doesn't necessarily present as an aplastic anemia kind of scenario. Now, the uh, sequestration crisis, they are going to have abdominal pain, symptoms of shock, and the patient will need uh, to be treated for that, okay? So this is why pain crisis is going to be the middle of our, our bow tie. Now, you all got the actions to take correct. You are going to give morphine because of that extreme pain, and you're going to give oxygen because of that oxygen sap being 90%. So that was correct. Now, based on the actions that you take, you have to follow up and you have to monitor it. Okay, so you all chose oxygen sat and breath sounds. I would submit to you that oxygen saturation is good, but we also had to address the pain. So yes. now it should be pain levels. And so kind of think of, of like this. If I do something, okay, what am I going to monitor for? If I implement something, I have to monitor to see if that implementation or that intervention was effective. And that is a strategy that you can use to make sure that it matches. Okay. Any questions about this one? So the pain really correlates with the morphine because once we administer yes. morphine, we want to see that the pain level goes down. So that's why that one was for that one. And then the oxygen saturation was due to the O2 sat, which we did pick them two actions. All right. Yes. That makes sense with the whole nursing um, uh, uh, plan. Yes. Okay, absolutely. Yes, and that's the nursing process, right? Yeah, like when you go to like the goals and stuff after you do the implementation and stuff, that makes that makes sense. Okay, and so that could be a way that you kind of check yourself if you do get this kind of question. Okay, does this make sense? You know, so don't go out or far in left field. If you're giving the patient pain medication, don't go and say, oh, I'm going to assess their neurological status. Like, no, like we have to stick with the interventions that we're using for the patient and follow up. Okay. All right. So great discussion, guys. Okay. All right. Wait a minute. Oh, this was the bow tie one. Um, I didn't do the all the questions like I wanted to. Okay, so that was the bow tie one. All right, let me go to the, the case study itself because there's actually more questions um, about this. All right, the information is, is the same, but it just gives you different styles uh, of questions. Okay, let me just bring that one over. Okay, and so it's going to be the same uh scenario but just different questions okay so uh, jennifer did a great job reading for us all of this information is the same and this is uh, i think one of my favorite kinds of questions it says click to highlight the four findings that require immediate follow-up 
okay? So this is a priority question and we are prioritizing using Maslow's hierarchy, okay? So take some time to look at it and then tell me what you think. Her pain. Yep, and restoration. restoration. Okay. Crackles. Pain. I heard pain. I heard crackles. I heard pulse socks. Respiration. Pulse socks. That's four. That's it. Okay. Are these the most important things? The four most important things that require immediate follow up? I would think so. Okay, well, you are correct. Ding, 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 ding. Okay, excellent. Okay, so I'm going to put the rationale in the chat. Okay, and that was quick. Y'all were like, okay, you can't fool me. Okay. <laughs> okay, so infections can precipitate complications of the sickle cell disease and severe pain can signal a vaso-occlusive crisis. And so remember those red blood cells that are usually shaped like donuts or discs, they become shaped like a crescent moon or sickles and they get stuck right in our smallest, tiniest of blood vessels, the capillaries. Normal vital signs for a six-year-old female are temperature 95.9 to 99.5, okay? And that's in degrees Fahrenheit. The pulse normal range is 70 to 115. Respirations is 20 to 25. Blood pressure is 95 over 60 to 110 over 75. The child's temperature, blood pressure, and heart rate are within normal limits. The elevated respiratory rate and low pulse oximeter reading can indicate a problem with perfusion or oxygenation. The breath sounds could indicate infection uh, or the possibility of acute chest syndrome is developing. Okay. All right. And I just read that because sometimes uh, the folks that are watching the video, they don't have the benefit of seeing the chat. Okay. All right. We'll go to the next. All right. So here's question number two. And again, make sure that you're reading to see if there's new information. Uh, when you are taking a test in exam soft, there's going to be like another tab, like right here where my cursor is. So make sure you click if you have a new tab and so you don't miss any information. I actually got a couple questions wrong because I didn't pay attention to the new information. So make sure that you're, uh, you know, paying close attention to that. All right. So I think last time we we had a good strategy. And uh, so, Tonya, how do you do you want to take the lead on this one? Yep. So we learned Well, I learned that I like the way if you take it one row at a time and you do pain crisis and then acute chest syndrome and then splenetic sequestration <laughs> and so <laughs> under pain crisis I would then say um history of recent respiratory illness would I check that box yes um pain only in the lower leg you said that was a chest thing so I'm not going to pick that one no I mentioned Crackles acute and... chest syndrome was a chest thing oh okay Okay, so pain crisis with pain in the leg, so I'm going to click that one. Okay. Crackle and long base. That's what I'm going to do. Okay. Have to do with pain. That would be chest. Yeah. Well, never mind. I don't. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm hmm so I, I was just saying, did you want me to check it or you were just thinking aloud? Yep, I, think. I was just thinking aloud. Yeah. Just what could fall up under the pain crisis? Um, it's only because I don't know. I don't entirely know what the other two are. That's why I'm kind of like quiet because I, 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 this is my first time seeing the other two. <sighs> but mm. would pain crisis give you crackling in your lung base? Well, you I know. No, that's, what, that's why I'm kind of reading the question like, this would like, this happen? Would it be acute chest syndrome for that one though? That's like I just I need to study the just um, okay. I don't know because doesn't it say can you can you scroll up a little bit? So I mean it wouldn't have nothing to do with the spleen. So like, I can say that. I guess loaded in chest spaces. Okay, so we know that she has a pain crisis. We've already said that. Okay, crackles in the lung basis. That's one of her symptoms. So it has to be with pain crisis. 
Because that's what she's having, right? No, that doesn't relate that's like that. That's not how it's done. Like, pain crisis can be of its own. So does this stuff on the side relate to pain crisis? Is it a like? Is it a sign and a symptom of pain crisis? Yeah, because uh, in clinical, I found a person with crackles and they were not in pain. Right, <laughs> not a pain crisis. Right, and so you great discussion mm -hmm. points. Right, I like how you're reasoning through, but also remember this patient has more than one condition that yes. she's that she's facing. So yes, she has crackles in the lung bases, but is it because of the pain crisis? Or is that something separate? What do we know about pain crisis? It's usually precipitated by an infection of some kind, right? Mm -hmm. so, yes. when, so when you're looking at each of these, when we look at pain crisis, we're asking, indicate if the finding is consistent with pain crisis or acute chest syndrome. But yeah, the patient's going to have a, a lot of different things going on. But what is consistent with pain crisis? Okay, so well, you can uh, check more than one box. So I would just say pain crisis and chest syndrome. <laughs> okay, know. so we're we're going down in the column. Something that um that Miss Tonya taught me is it's better to go pain crisis. Do they have recent history? Uh, pain in lower legs, crackles. Okay, and then go down this. So right. your mind is just thinking on one condition, and then you go acute chest syndrome. Will they have recent history? And you go that way, and then you go to the splenic sequestration, and you do it that way. Now, for some people, if your brain works differently, you can go across, right? But that's something that we determined that works for us. So if that, you know, doesn't work with how your brain is set up, that's okay. Uh, uh, I don't, mm, I wouldn't I, say that's a pain crisis for crackles and lung bases. Okay. All right. So just you tell me what you think I so should check for I, pain I think crisis. you should think check off chest respiration of 32 breaths. Yeah, mm -hmm. you should check that one. Yeah, um, and that's it. And that's it. Most ox because they breathing so fast, so their oxygen is going to go down because they breathing real fast. But would that be considered acute chest syndrome, though? It can be two boxes, but yeah, yeah. which you would acute chest syndrome for the human. ninety percent. Okay. Okay, so don't check it for pulse ox ninety percent. I would say yeah. Okay, for pain. Okay. <laughs> Soft abdomen? No. Nah. I don't have nothing and to do blood with pressure. That. No. Okay. So let me ask you this question. If you're so I'll I won't ask any questions. So okay, so Oh, I get what you're going at, Miss Colleen. If you in pain and you're not eating, is that what you were gonna go at? <laughs> no, I was oh. trying to do a better job of not giving away the answer. My daughter always tells me that you give away the answer, so I'm trying to say less. So <laughs> I'm just trying to click what you all tell me, and then we could talk about it at the end. Okay. Um, um, so if you say this is what we check for pain crisis, then we can go to acute chest syndrome, and you check. History, yes. <sighs> okay. Chest. No, I'm going to do um, crackles. Yeah, the crackles, acute chest. I could do respiration. Yep. Cold socks. Yep. Uh, Isn't the abdomen good. supposed to be soft? What does it got to do with anything in here? Okay, yeah. so so what that is saying is if the patient is in pain, if they have acute chest, if they have a splenic sequestration, will the abdomen be soft? Is that something that you should find with this condition <laughs> okay so then check soft um um abdominal for pain crisis i guess it it would be a finding right um, right is this consistent with pain crisis a soft abdomen if the patient has acute chest syndrome, would they have a soft abdomen? If they have splenic sequestration, would they have a soft abdomen? So I'm going to give you a cheating hint that with splenic sequestration, their abdomen is not going to be soft, okay? They're going to have issues, and those red blood cells are getting stuck, right? And the spleen is going to become enlarged. So that's going to become swollen. It's going to be painful. 
the abdomen abdomen is not going to be soft. It's going to be hard because of that uh, splenomegaly, if that makes sense. Yeah. So yeah. let me just go ahead and check yep, that. Check that I... one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I agree. Okay. So uh, what about the blood pressure? Definitely not pain crisis. Your blood pressure going to be elevated because you're in pain. <laughs> but hers okay. not elevated and she in pain. I don't think this is, I don't know. Your respirations will go up and your blood pressure will be up when you're in pain. Well, I would take the pulse off of pain because one is um, objective data, subjective and objective data. So pain is what you say it is. So I will take that off. So it you just can't say my O2 is at 90% because I'm in pain. So I would take she that off. She can't tell you that her O2 stat is 90%. That's objective. That's not subjective. You ain't hear what I said. I said she can't say that her pain is that level. So how can you say it's a pain crisis? If there's a pain scale for a six-year-old. Okay, so I think we're getting a little derailed a little bit. So pain crisis is the type of anemic anemic crisis, right? Yes, that sickle cell patients experience. Okay, so let's um we're gonna come back to this because we're gonna look at each one. Let what do you all think about splenic? sequestration um splenic i'm not <laughs> sure what that is That's i don't even know what that is i can't even tell you i ain't gonna lie like that <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> <laughs> we just know you don't check soft abdominal <laughs> yeah that. okay so let's think of before i give you any more information what if you saw this on nclex what um, can you do to break this down if you have like no idea what's one of the things you could do well, we're talking about the spleen, so uh, okay. a history of recent. Well, what does the spleen have to do with respiratory? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. So, um, before you go into that, just looking at the words, like if you get um a question and you're like, I don't know what that term means. Let's try to break break down the words. So, yeah. splenic it has something to do with the spleen. Yes. If someone is sequestrated right? They're kind of captured or they're held. They're in a room by themselves, probably, oh. right? So, you know, like the people in the jury, they're sequestered. They can't have access to social media. They're like locked in a room just with the jurists so that they can discuss and deliberate. So they're kind of stuck. So something is happening where something is stuck with the spleen. So if you think about it like that, that might help you because I'm thinking, okay, if something gets stuck in my spleen, I think, what is the function of the spleen? Well, the spleen helps to clean up red blood cells. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, old red blood cells, you know, um, d broken or, uh, you know, red blood cells that have um, malfunctioned. So that maybe can help you to think, okay, a little bit more about it, right? Now, when we think about splenic sequestration, this is a really severe complication of sickle cell anemia, and it primarily affects young children. And that's the case. We have a six-year-old. So there's going to be an acute drop of hemoglobin. And, and we talk about acute, we're going down to like two. So okay. what, the blood pressure go down? Um, I don't think the blood pressure is going to go down down i think it's going to go up because it's still up. pain that has to be painful because the spleen is going to be swollen from what yeah. i'm listening to the spleen is going to swell and it's going to cause a hard abdomen the person going to be in pain so the blood pressure going to be up uh, okay yes i i agree with that as well okay so the other thing with this um Let's see, let's see, what else can I tell you? I, well, I think that's what we need to know for that, okay? So let's uh, now go back. And so for your splenic sequestration, what would you have me to check? <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm gonna put respiration, cause I'm gonna go with respiration, cause I don't, I don't got know, nothing I don't know what is that? Oh, oh, respiration, she said, yeah. okay. I'm gonna click okay. that one. 
Oh my god. That's all it I'm might be that. pain in the lower leg. We're gonna I'm gonna just I would say pain, but only well, no, I hate the word only pain in the abdomen on the left side specifically because that's where the spleen is. That ain't got nothing to do with the legs. But it's a sequence. So is it because it's a buildup of something? Pain can shoot anywhere. Yeah, it is a buildup of something. You know, shoot so... me because I don't know what spleen is, whatever the ass word is. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so if i was on NCLEX, i'm telling you about that's all i would probably pick for I, other than the blood pressure i'm assuming that could go under acute chest syndrome you know the blood pressure still being low but i don't know i know all the boxes have to get a check so if i'm gonna put the blood pressure check box i'm gonna put it under the chest okay under the chest okay yeah. all right so you gotta it... click all the boxes Okay, yes. All right. So take a mental picture of what you have chosen. Okay, what you have chosen. I'm going to now select the correct choices and we're going to talk about it. Okay, so really great dialogue. So for pain, we've got this one, this one, actually all of them except crackles in the bases. For acute chest, all except this one. So y'all got acute chest, correct? splenic sequestration you did pretty good you just missed a couple of them okay so actually not bad y'all actually did pretty good together as a team okay so let's make sure that we remove any faulty logic though okay so <laughs> in this patient okay we could we're thinking okay these three possible things that have to do with sickle cell so not necessarily in this patient but these are all uh complications that can occur with sickle cell so the recent illness can cause hemoglobin s inside the red blood cell to stick or to clump together and then we will have these crescent shaped cells right which we establish and just a, a quick sidebar it's uh, more common in african americans african of africa those of african descent and Mediterranean descent. So these sickle red blood cells can block blood flow and prevent oxygen from properly circulating, okay, which is something that we understand. And now tissue that's distal, that's further away from the blockages, they can become ischemic, resulting in pain. That means that there's a blockage because of these sickle sticky red blood cells, sickle shaped sticky red blood cells, and the tissues beyond the blockage, they're not getting blood flow. No blood flow because we know blood has oxygen and nutrients. If there's no blood flow, those cells and tissues will die and that causes the pain. And we're talking about extreme pain, right? So this pain crisis is a vaso-occlusive episode. That means the, the vessels, right, they're occluded, they are blocked, okay? And so this can occur following a respiratory illness that results in lower oxygen levels or dehydration. So you may remember now, oh yeah, when I was in clinical and I had my sickle cell patient, the two things that they focus on was dehydration and stress because stress can <laughs> compromise the immune system, right? So again, this pain crisis or vaso-occlusive episode can follow a respiratory illness and that respiratory illness is gonna have lower oxygen and it can cause dehydration. Now, acute chest syndrome is a complication that can follow a pain crisis if these sickle cells block blood and oxygen from reaching the lungs, okay, the lungs. So uh, again, you'll, you'll probably see the scenario, and I think I mentioned it, okay, the patient is a sickle cell patient, they're in the hospital because they have pain crisis and they complain of sudden difficulty breathing or dyspnea and pain in the chest. Boom, I know that that is indicative of acute chest syndrome. So they'll have a recent history, possibly of respiratory illness, crackles, respirations that are elevated, their pulse ox, of course, is, is not going to be within normal limits. The abdomen is soft because they don't have any issues with the, the organs in their abdomen per se. It's more a respiratory scenario. And then the blood pressure uh, is normal limits. All right, so splenic sequestration, 
what's going on with this one? So the sickle cell uh, blood cells, they're trapped and they are destroyed by the spleen. The spleen enlarges with blood and becomes swollen and painful. And then splenic sequestration uh, can then look like shock, okay? It can manifest itself as signs and symptoms of shock. So that blood pressure would be much lower than, right, if it was a sign of shock, okay? All right, this was a tough one. This was a tough one, okay? Uh, any questions? No. No, okay, let's see what we can glean from this one. I've got a lot of research to do to follow up to post on here. All right, so this is question number three. So history and physical, everything looks the same. The lab report looks the same. Okay, so uh, anybody want to take the lead on this one? <laughs> okay, uh, I'm always up for it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the top two care priorities for the client. So I'm definitely going to be providing pain management. I'm torn between that, that treating the infection. But if I had to go with, I guess I would say reading the infection. And treating the infection. I still begin oxygen therapy because they can't breathe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the last two answers for the... Exactly. The, uh, okay. Yeah, put that oxygen mm -hmm. therapy on there. Okay, so great discussion. Remember Maslow, right? So remember Maslow's hierarchy. So I know that we're like getting all high level because it's like, oh man, these are like some complex complications, but this is a Maslow's question, right? This is a Maslow's question. So uh, yes, ABCs, airway, breathing, circulation. So yes, I need to treat that oxygen, uh, treat their airway issue with <laughs> excuse me with oxygen please i feel like that's what i need to all right so let me put the <laughs> rationale in the that chat the same answer from the boat fly question at first yes yes it does right absolutely so good catch okay uh so these are the two top priorities but do you see how the questions they're asking them in it's the same question but they're mm -hmm. kind of changing it a little bit but the answer yeah. is the same because your priority is going to be the same mm -hmm. so so don't let them fool you right if they make it a bow tie if they make it a drag and drop okay it's still the same thing the nurse knows that these are priorities and again that's on maslow okay so uh the <laughs> Excuse me. The nurse needs most pain management and oxygen to stop the sickling process and treat the vaso-occlusive pain crisis. This kind of also gets to the root of, do you understand what's happening in sickle cell anemia? Okay. Uh, and so that's a good way to kind of quiz yourself or as you are studying for NCLEX or for med surge or whatever you're studying for, do I understand the pathophysiology? What is actually happening inside my patient? Because that's what we have to kind of fix, right? We're just not going to pop a, a pain pill and say, okay, you're good to go. We've got to look at what the needs are. The client may also be developing acute chest syndrome, but further testing is indicated. Antibiotics may be needed if the diagnosis of acute chest syndrome is made. And the labs indicate adequate hydration at this time because the sodium was sodium good. Breath. The BUN was BUN good, was right? Was in normal limits, I should say. Uh, BUN was in normal limits. The sodium was in normal limits. So that tells me that it's not like a, you know, a uh, situation that we have to look at dehydration right now. Although we do know that with sickle cell, dehydration could be a factor, but based on the lab values, that's not a priority at this time. Okay, um, so interventions would be implemented to optimize hydration, but a bolus should not be given until acute chest syndrome has been ruled out. 
okay? While the hematocrit and hemoglobin are low, a hemoglobin greater than 10 is uh, within target levels for children with sickle cell disease. A transfusion may be needed if the diagnosis of acute chest syndrome is confirmed or oxygen needs continue, okay? All right. So this was probably one of the toughest ones I think I've done so far. All right, so uh, let's go to the next question, number four. And let's see, all the information is the same. So we're going to ask ourselves to answer this one. Select the orders from each ca of the categories the nurse anticipates including in the plan of care. Each category must have at least one response selected. Each category may have um, more than one order. Hold down control and make multiple selections. Okay, so let's take a look. So we have nursing, medication, and diagnostics. So for nursing, what should I select? Oxygen, nasal cannula. Okay. You said oxygen, nasal cannula. Okay, anything else? Medication. Okay, so go to the medication. To the medication. Section, morphine. Section. Morphine. 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 Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, blood count, blood gas. Blood gases. Okay. Now you can choose more than. Oh, wait. Did I not? Oh, I did oh, not wait. hold it down properly. Oh, you got to hold down control. And then way. put it in order? Uh, no, you just have oh. to select from each. Um, I didn't do a good job. All right. So let me just, instead of doing that, I'm going to go ahead and annotate. So you said this one, and yes. you said morphine, yes. and. Oh, wait, the checks are not going to move with me. Aw, <laughs> that's what happens when you <laughs> annotate. All right, so we're just going to put it off to the side. Just remember it. Um, and then what was the other one under diagnostics, you said? Blood gases? Somebody said blood gases. Or is it a chest x-ray? Which one you I would, need? I would, well... I don't know about chest, even though she got crackles, though. Um, but I don't. Know. Okay, so what what's a diagnostic test? What why do we do diagnostics? To rule out. Okay, so or to it, diagnose something. I'm sorry. Yeah, so it's both. So would that be appropriate to do for this patient at this time? Not a chest X-ray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a chest X-ray. Would what would that what would be the benefit of doing a chest X-ray for this patient based on how she presented? See if they got pneumonia or something. Yeah, because she got crackles, right? Uh, I'm still okay. Crackles, yeah, so. yes. So, so you're right. I'm not. I'm not. I'm just trying to ask a question. I'm not trying to lead you. I'm hopefully not trying to lead you in one direction or the other. I'm just trying to get you to think. Okay, does this make sense for this patient to have this done? What is the outcome going to be if I choose this answer? And so let's do that for every single one. Okay, for every single one. So the nursing care for this patient. Okay, let me just clear these. Okay. Should this patient use the incentive spirometer every hour while they're awake? Is that going to help the patient? Is that going to be beneficial? No. Okay, so I've got one no. Let me ask you all a question. Why do we have patients use the incentive spirometer? What That's is it for? Question, so I would say yes. Okay, and so why would you say yes? It's to prevent... Um, uh pneumonia right okay yes so it's and it's also preventing those secretions right from becoming stagnant and it's exercising the lungs having them fully expand so mm -hmm. if this patient was to use the ins incentive spirometer every hour while they're awake would it be a good thing or not so good thing for them it would be a good thing be a good thing it would be a good thing. So I'm going to do a good thing for my patient because I'm a good nurse, right? So yeah. that's one way that you can approach it if you have this kind of a question. Does it make sense for this patient? Is it going to benefit them or is it going to harm them? And obviously, you're not going to choose the one that's going to harm them, okay? So yes, incentive spirometry every hour while they're awake is a good thing to do. 
should I give this patient oxygen per nasal cannula to keep their pulse ox over 90? Yes. yes. Yes, that's a good thing. So I'm going to do that. Should I give them ice packs? No. 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 What happens if I put ice packs where the patient's having that vaso-occlusive crisis? It could be a trigger. Restrict the vessels. Work. Exactly. It's going to constrict the blood vessels and it's going to make the condition worse. You'd be a bad nurse. Okay. You lose your license. Okay. So I'm not going to put ice packs on the affected areas. Okay. Medication. Does this patient need IV fluid bolus? No. No, right? Because we know that they're not severely dehydrated. So that's not really a priority right now. Should the patient get morphine sulfate? Yes. Yes, because mm -hmm. of their pain. Should the patient get, <laughs> excuse me, ampicillin? No, because she's allergic to penicillin. Yep. Thank you. Thank right. you. Yes, that's right. She should not get ampicillin. So please. And I don't think y'all were checking that anyway. Okay. Yep. Diagnostics, chest x-ray. Should we give the patient a chest x-ray? Yeah. Yes. Yes. What is that going to do for us? Rule out pneumonia. Okay, sure. And we can get a close look at her lungs and see what's going on. What about a reticulite count? <laughs> I would say, yeah, because uh, I, I think if I, I don't remember learning much about it, but I know it measures the... Uh, the amount of uh blood cells that are kind of immature not so immature if that makes sense yes so you're Either right blood count. so the reticulite count is going to measure how many immature red blood cells the patient has inside of their bone marrow and if that is a low number this patient's going to need a transfusion so this is going to be a good thing to do for this patient right to get that reticulite mm -hmm blood cell and that makes sense because this is a sickle cell patient we know that their red blood cells have issues right yep. so yes i'm going to get that reticulocyte count am i going to do blood gases every four hours no. uh, hmm. i'm kind of torn on that one Okay. Probably not as a child. I guess. <laughs> yeah. It's a child, right? And is this yeah. necessary? Okay. No. Okay. Now, if the patient doesn't improve on oxygen therapy, because we're going to give them the oxygen, if they're not improving, then yes. And I agree, it is a child. It is an invasive procedure. And every time we get that ABG, we're potentially introducing infection into the patient. So you don't necessarily want to do those serial blood gases unless we absolutely positively have to. Okay. So it's kind of like a last resort. Okay. All right. This was a pretty intense. Okay, let's go to question number five. And we've got the vital signs. Everything is the same. That's the same. Okay, so here's the orders. So who wants to read this for us? All right. Admit to the pediatric unit. Start IV 5% dextrose and 45, uh, 0.45 normal saline at 65 mils per hour. And center spirometry every hour while awake. Oxygen per nasal cannula to keep pulse ox greater than 95. Morphine sulfate, 4.5 milligrams, <laughs> 0.2 milligrams per kilogram per dose IV. Uh, I guess just one IV, is that what it's saying? Uh, patient control, analgesia per pharmacy protocol, Obtain chest x-ray and obtain reticulocyte count. Yes. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So the nurse, and thank you for reading that. The nurse received orders for this client. Click to highlight the orders the nurse should implement immediately. So this is a prioritization, right? Oxygen. Admit them to the pediatric unit <laughs> Okay, so don't forget your ABCs. Don't forget Maslow's hierarchy, right? Because we're getting all fancy, but don't forget the basics. Morphine. Um, start the IV. Okay. Uh huh. Anything else? The, in, the spirometer. Yeah, the spirometer. 
Okay, so do I have to do that immediately? No. So, uh, get an x-ray or a blood count? Patient control, pain, uh, pain management, per pharmacy. pharmacy protocol. Okay, so patient control pain, and I heard, I think, Siani say X chest x-ray? No, she said a blood count. Okay, sorry. Okay. So that would probably be that, yeah. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So let's take a look at what should we... pretty important. Okay. I mean, if there's no limit to it, attaining the checks x ray is, is important. So, yeah. well, what if I say this? Well, all of it is important, right? That's why the doctor yeah. put the order in, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, True. what? And this is kind of hard because it doesn't tell you, like, How okay, many? choose three things. But this is like, what do you need to do right now? If you had to do something or some things and then leave and leave it for the next nurse to do and give her time to get settled, blah, 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 and the patient won't die, then, you know, what would those things be? Okay. okay. Guess what's the name of the family will definitely first. Okay. Uh, say that again, please. The nasal cannula would definitely be number one. Okay, so I agree. Mm -hmm. So let me deselect them and we're going to start all over again. Again, if you could do one thing or two things or whatever the most important things and then you had to leave. So you said oxygen. And then I would say morphine. Okay, yeah. and then morphine. Start okay, okay, start the IV. Okay, stop there. Those are the correct answers, okay? So you're going to do all of these because you're a great nurse and the doctor put the orders in and you're going to follow the doctor's order, but you're always going to have a questioning attitude. But the priorities are going to be in accordance with Maslow, right? Your A, B, A, B, C. So we're going to give oxygen. We're going to give morphine. And that's going to help decrease the patient's metabolic needs, and stop the sickling process because that's important because if we don't stop the sickling process, the patient's condition is going to deteriorate. Okay, the morphine is ordered IV, so we better have an IV, okay? We can't administer IV meds without an IV. The chest x-ray is going to be great because we're going to see if there's any, you know, life-threatening issues, but that's not something we need to do immediately. OK, the reticulite count is important because it's going to tell us about <clears throat> those immature red blood cells if the patient needs a transfusion. But we don't have to do that immediately. OK, the PCA uh, is not going to be started until after the morphine is given. OK, so that's not going to be immediate. OK, incentive spirometry, that's kind of like at the bottom of the list where that's not an immediate kind of thing. OK, and transferring this pediatric patient, we can't we just have to wait for a bed to be available. There might not be a bed available, so we can't necessarily transfer them when we want to. OK, any questions about this one? No, no this this one is a tough one. I'm not going to lie to you. All right, so here's the last question, and thanks for hanging uh, tough. This was a long one, a complex one. Uh, so health history and physical hasn't changed. Lab report is still the same. The orders are as we've seen, but what is new is the nurse's note, okay? So who wants to read that for us? 11.30 started on four liters of oxygen per nasal cannula. IV started in left arm. IV morphine given. 11.45 PCA pump started. Chest x-ray obtained. Reticular site count obtained. Wait a minute. Weren't we supposed to pick all of those for the last question? So, anyway. uh, but no, it's just telling you what, what she did or what he did, what the nurse did. Pain in lower legs rated 2 out of 10 with back pain rated 4 out of 10. Uh, vital signs 100.4, temperature 100.4 uh, degrees Fahrenheit, pulse 110, blood pressure. Okay, don't say nothing about blood pressure. Respiration is 32. Wait a minute. Oh, it's a typo okay. with the BP. Sorry. Okay. 110 over 68, pulse ox 90% on 4 liters of oxygen per nasal cannula. 
Dang, that's a lot of oxygen. You still at 90. Okay, that's a good point you brought up. So what do you think? Okay, you're giving four liters and they're still at 90. What do you think? The crackles in the lungs would probably have something to do with it. Okay, well, I'm going to look. have you look at this, right? And so for each finding, click to specify if the finding indicates that the client's status has improved, worsened, or has not changed. Each row must have one selection. Okay, so for leg pain, has improved. it improved, worsened? So you said, I heard somebody say improved. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. respiratory status, improve, worsen, or not change? It didn't change. Nope. Okay, it did not change. Okay, nope. blood pressure? It didn't change. It didn't change. I don't even remember back pain rating. It was a uh, four out of ten. What was it before? Yeah, that's something I don't remember. I don't remember no back pain. I, rem I don't remember saying nothing about back pain. I just remember leg pain. Okay, well, let's go back and see if we've got any back pain. Okay, let's see. Pain in both legs. So it doesn't say anything about that. That could also be a typo. It's a man-made thing. So I'll give that one to you because I kind of agree with you. So the back pain has actually worsened. And actually, um, it might not be a typo because guess what? They didn't mention back pain, oh, right? Yeah, so we can happen. assume that there was no back pain. And I don't like the word assume because that's not a good word. But there was no back pain. But now there is back pain. So that tells us that it has worsened. And the temperature worsened too. Yeah, the temperature worsened. Okay, so you all <laughs> almost got everything right. Let's talk about the respiratory status. So mm. if my patient has a, a pulse ox of 90 and they're on room air and I give them four liters of oxygen, and they're still at 90, is that improve, worsen, or not change? Worsen. Well, the, worsen. Yeah, the both ox did worsen. I was looking at respiration, is that, honestly. I ain't gonna lie. Respiration yes. is 32. And so remember, if we implement something and the patient's condition, you know, doesn't change, that's not good. It's just like we weren't doing anything at all. Yes. Yeah. So, so it is worsening. It is definitely worsening. So in this case, the leg pain has improved. The respiratory status is worsened because they're getting four liters. And say, you even said it, that's a lot of oxygen, right? You said that's a lot yeah. of oxygen. Okay, and they're still at 90%. They haven't even bumped up a little bit. Blood pressure has not changed. The back pain and the temperature has worsened. And I think that was a good kind of thing because you're like, back pain? I didn't see back pain before. They probably weren't reporting back pain. So don't let that trip you up if you see that on the NCLEX, okay? All right, good job. All right, and that is the end. Okay, so... I'm going to go around the room and I am I wrote down some things for follow-up. The okay. first thing on the top of my list is fenestrated tracheostomy and inflating the cuff, right? That was the question, inflating the cuff yes. and how the patient will speak because that was the specific thing of the question, right? It was a select all that apply. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm going to give a detailed explanation for that one. Okay, and let's kind of go around the room. Um, say, did you were? I'll check my email to see about that medication question, and I'll follow that up. So the medication question, and let's just go around the room and touch base with anything else that wasn't clear because there was a lot of concepts in this uh, discussion tonight. Alicia, I'll start with you. No, but I appreciate the dialogue between everybody because. Um, a lot of my my questions were answered um, because of that dialogue. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Alicia. I'm glad that you were here and you were really adding value to the discussion. So thank you. Okay, and you're welcome to come anytime. Oh, okay, Jennifer, how's it going? 
Um, I'm just glad it's over. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you got to keep it real. You got to keep it real. So, okay, I'll t- I'll take that. All right, Tanya, what about you? Yeah, yeah, wow. Well. As always, I enjoy our sessions. Okay, awesome. Well, you make it enjoyable. I like the way you think. Okay, Siani. Oh well, yeah, I definitely enjoyed it. I um I came in in the middle of it, so I didn't catch most of the scenario background, but I caught on as we went, so I I was able to feel more confident with my answer. Thanks for having me. Okay, great, and you're welcome anytime. Okay, say. Huh? Any oh, anything. Fine. No, I got my mindset on doing a couple of concept maps, though, especially on this, uh, what is it, uh, the S-word crisis. <laughs> this sp- splenic crisis you're talking about? The C- Oh, you're talking about splenic sequestration. Yeah, and the aplastic <laughs> one. I mean, I kind of got an idea about the aplastic one, but definitely the, the S-word crisis. Okay, so let me ask you this. Would it be beneficial in these sessions if I actually gave like a little mini lecture on all of these conditions first and then did the scenario or do the scenario and then send the summary email uh what what is the best thing to do do the scenario then the summary yeah, that way we know what we don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we were all looking crazy looking at these two two things and we ain't never seen before Okay, well, and it's good. So I like that. Okay, I just want to make sure that uh, I'm doing what is the best for everybody. But I, I like that. So just go in and anything and then I'll, I'll send the summary email and then we'll be good to go. Okay, fantastic. Anything that you want to see for Tuesday, because I'm doing Tuesdays and Thursdays now because Mrs. Patterson is not going to be with us anymore. So um, anything that you want to see. Uh, 